to renew that every time that it expires. Right? See, the process is a little different, though. When you are in the U.S., and you then, uh, you know, visa is denied, a non-immigrant visa is denied, a change of status or extension or whatever, based upon some fraud or misrepresentation, or people that come from the border, they come from, the, from Mexico, from Canada, for example, uh, with some right. kind of ineligibilities, right. uh, they can submit that request at the port of entry. Mm -hmm. So it, it work, works out a little different ways, but the good news is that it's one same agency now as against the previous times that is adjudicating all the waiver applications. Now, what happens if the council does not recommend? So there are three things, there are three ways to do it. Council recommends, council doesn't recommend, just see forward, she doesn't say anything, and council opposes that. The opposition cases against, I would say, where the council gives good reasons why this person should not be given a waiver, most of the time the waiver office will go along with the councillor information. And when they say nothing, I would say good chances of getting, even the council not saying anything, but they see that is worth approval, they do approve. But again, I mean, it's not that, you know, some people think that we are trying to tell some of these things because we are promoting our business. And that's not the case, believe me. But I'm saying these are the kind of cases very difficult to handle. I exactly. mean, if, if it's the law doesn't say, no, you have to have a lawyer to apply for a non-immigrant waiver or any waiver. But how often can people succeed without the help of, because the lawyer knows what the council wants. Lawyer knows what the uh, government immigration service here wants in granting exactly. a member. So it has to be, sometimes they're complex matters. Sometimes we have to look at the reasons for ineligibility. Sometimes we can even attack that the charge by itself was really not okay. But anyway. Well, oftentimes we have to get the papers from the consulate, whatever they are, and we have to try to drill down with the client, sit with them, and try to do an analysis yeah. to figure out what the reason, what the basis was yeah. for why it was. No, I right. always, uh, David, always one good piece of advice I tell you. When a person goes and applies for a non-immigrant visa at an American consul, remember each word, each question that the consul asked you, and each reply you gave. And if you took some documents, uh, the consul saw them, like, which they don't see generally, then you should know what he saw from where the problem is coming in. Happens a lot in H and L cases, when they look at the papers and they find some problems there. So, so important thing is that I always tell them, give me a complete narration. What did you apply for? What did you fill up the form in the application? Right. What kind of documents did you take? Did the council look at the documents or not? In the interview, tell me every question the council asked you and uh, you did not reply. But sometimes I know, most of the time I know, I would say, from the interview what happened, I can pick up. Because in one case, the person went for H1B and he looked all the papers, everything is fine. Uh, we don't need anything more. You just have to wait some more period of time. Right. Then I say, what, what, asks, what anything I ask? He says, are you asking about the work, the job duties, technical information about the job? Right, and based on that, we can intuit you know, what exactly TAL. what the issue is. I said, yeah. don't worry, this is TL, technical, uh, technological alert, right. uh, that the council cannot issue the visa, he has to refer it to the Department of State. They have to inquire into that, technical to clearances, list, right. and they uh -huh. will issue most of the time. Exactly. Well, I'm saying, this is one example. There are examples where he was looking more in the divorce issue, more in the marriage. When did you get, how do you have photos, give me the concotri, give me the this. And I know the council is looking into the validity of the marriage, right. not even the bona fides. It may be bona fide, it may be real, but it's not valid because he really never filed the petition based upon the real date of marriage. Well, there's no substitute for a lot of experience, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so important thing for any good lawyer who have a lot of experience to see where the problem is coming from. You can only solve it if you know. What is the issue? What is council looking into that? What kind of fraud, what kind of charge is coming from this? And there have been a couple of times where the council was wrong even applying. I mean, basically, based on a presumption or a thought, it was not a bona fide. But as the time went, one they saw more documents of honeymoon and photos and pictures. They went in and did the field investigation also. Look at the neighbors and talk to the neighbors and they, they were satisfied. Except it delayed a year or two. Right. But there the case could be resolved. So your few words in the end, whatever you want to say about the consular processing, about the importance of uh, people going to experience lawyers or whatever you need to add. Well, I think that, as I said before, there's really no substitute for a tremendous amount of experience. A lot of times we as lawyers uh, are given a fact scenario where a client may not have even received 
a piece of paper from the consulate. And so what we'll do is we'll have to ask our clients to engage us for the purposes of getting a document Cutting from the consulate. And, and that's unfortunately just work in and of itself. Once we obtain that documentation, we can then start inquiring making, uh, and making a full-blown analysis so we know exactly what the layers of complexity in their case are. David, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank Welcome, all Michael. of you. We, we hope we try, David, and we try to give you as much as good information as we can. And we hope that you really get some help from our programs. But please let us know what you feel about our programs. You have any suggestions, you have any comments, please send the email to us. And we'll, we always willing, we're always open to listen to your advice, to your suggestions and comments. And we'll try to bring more and more valuable information to you. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, David. And thank goodbye thank to you, all Michael. of you.